And um, great. All right. So I'm just going to press record now for the first module. So this will just take a couple of seconds just to come up onto our screens because it's coming from the cloud. But um, I just wanted to welcome you all and to say how excited I am that we're here doing this together at this time. So and I was very, it was great to hear everyone's what people wanted to get out of the course. That gives me a sense of where best to take things for you. Um, what I might actually just ask now is if people could possibly just mute your, yourselves just while I'm presenting, just because I'm getting a little bit of background and some noise, um, and it just helps if we're all muted. When you want to ask a question, um, I may just, I can't unfortunately see the chat box when I'm in this mode. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just be running this as a straight presentation, and then um, I'll then open up, I'll stop sharing my screen, and I'll come back to questions at the end. So if you wouldn't mind just taking, if you've got a question, um, don't worry, we'll, we'll be able to um, come back to those at the end. So just take a note of those. So if that's okay with everybody, that'd be great. So I would like to welcome everybody to Authentic Opposite Transform and Cell 2.0. And today we are covering our first module of Authentic Office, which is all about our purpose. I can't hear you. Oh, you can't hear me, Crystal. Sorry, I can't hear you. Oh, you, can oh. It, you might have muted everything, Crystal. Oh, okay. Oh, how do I just mute? Sorry, I'm so sorry. No, no, that's okay. That's a good. I'm glad you, you needed to tell me you can't hear me. That's all good. Just try mousing over the bottom and of your of the black screen, and you should see your video. You just mute that. You don't mute your computer. You just go down to the bottom of the black screen, and you just mute that little that little um that little guy that little microphone. Does that work for you, Crystal? I'll just come out of this for a sec. Oh, I did that, but as soon as I, um, as you started talking, it just went funny. So uh, I'll just, true. I'll just be really quiet. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. That's all good. No, that sounds fine. It's just sometimes I find, and I sometimes find when I'm listening, I can start scratching sound around paper around. So I'm sure you'll be great. We'll be good. Alrighty. I shall now go back into, I'm still sharing. So I'm just going to go into my screen again. This just takes a little second to click over. it's accessing from the cloud. Alrighty, so I would like to welcome you all to Authentic Offers That Transform and Sell 2.0 and our very first module, um, our module one, which is all about our purpose. So just a big welcome. I really want to say how glad I am that you're here and, um, and to congratulate you for making such a great decision for your business and, and, and for yourself as well. So before we um, dive into this module, I just wanted to give you a quick overview of what we're going to be covering in the next six weeks. So today is all about, um, is all about our purpose. So this is really about ensuring that you're aligning, you're feeling fully aligned with your business and um, that you're feeling in, in a great space with that. And also we're going, I'm going to be starting you on the process of, of your audience research. So we'll be going through that today. Next week, we'll be looking then at the people module um, of my process, which will be helping you look at your audience who you've been talking to, we'll be looking at your competitors, and we'll be starting to talk about creating your avatar and your niche and your business goal. Um, we're covering quite a bit next week, but, but don't, don't worry that this is carried over a couple of weeks because I, it's a very big part of the topic, but we have to sort of, I would like to start this process in week two. And then in week three, we are finalising your avatar probably confirming your niche and business goals, some more, some more there, and then helping you create your unique offer. And then week four, we're going to be confirming your offer and then helping you create your foundational message. So if I can just explain, your offer is really what it is that you're wanting to take out to the market. So um, this would be, you know, what particular service that you wanted to take out. So um, Josie mentioned earlier wanting to help women in business. So what specifically is she going to help women in business with? And then your foundational messaging is almost like the foundational message. It's like the foundations of a house. It, it's about explaining who you are, what you do, why you're doing it, and also explains your, your offer. In week five, um, I show you how to package your offer up and map out how you're going to take that to the market. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to share with you a couple of, sort of marketing terms you may or may not have heard before, but things like your sales funnel and your value ladder. And um, then I'm giving you some time in this time in November, we'll, we'll basically we'll be having an implementation time to give you some time to work through that material because there's quite a bit of material in week one to five. Um, there won't be any classes from the 15th to the 17th, 27th of November, but there will be Facebook, Facebook group support. 
And um, week six is really just finalizing what you're doing with your sales ladder and your, your sales funnel and your value ladder and creating your very first opt-in. So there's lots of great material that we're covering. Um, and I feel sure that by the end of this, we'll have achieved what, you, what you're looking for. So, and as we're going through the course, as I said, there's a Q&A session every Tuesday. And I really encourage you to bring, bring your questions to that and bring your materials. As we go through the course, there'll be materials, things like your messaging. You can bring that um, and workshop that with, with me in the Q&A session. So it's very much like a live coaching session. And I make sure that everyone gets a chance to, to workshop their stuff as we go through. So it's... It, um, it it's really is truly a mastermind process that we're going through. Um, the other thing I just wanted to remind you is that if you'd like to have a go with Trello um, and you'd like to manage your course materials through this, then please feel free to email me and I will arrange that and send that board to you. I just need to invite, create a board for you and invite you to that board. So without further ado, let's focus today on your purpose. So today is, is all about helping you Tap into your genius zone. So what, and what I call this is your inner yes. So whatever the calling is that you may have had in you for a long period of time in terms of what it is that you want to do. And Josie said earlier, I want to help people feel better. She's really clear that that's her zone of genius. Um, and the plan with this is that when you're very clear on that, you'll be able to actually, your marketing will become supercharged because you're no longer trying to be all things to all people. And we're going to align that with your business so that you'll always feel like you're in flow and you're, in, you're always feeling like you've got a lot of energy to put into your business. And I do know time, you know, when we're working in business, there are good days and there are bad days. And it's this, that's the reason that I really focus on this notion of alignment is that I really want to ensure that when you're having not such good days that you are feeling connected um, to your, your business and you feel very purposeful about it and that will help you get through those difficult days. Um, we're going to be talking about helping you get clear on what you do, what you stand for and how you're different so that you can become very clear to your community. And we're also going to help you start on this process of understanding more about your audience because for you to have a great business and for you to have a great message in the market, we need to know more about your audience and what they need and want from you. So that's what we're covering today. Um, so yeah, I've just covered that already in terms of genius zone, what you're doing and your audience research process. So let's just get in now to have a bit of a chat about your genius zone. And this is a term you might've heard used elsewhere. Um, it's a term that I particularly like it. It's been developed and the person who developed it, his name is escaping me at this point. Um, but, um, there's been a lot written about this, but really if we were to bring it all down into a nutshell, your genius zone is understanding three things. What, what do you love? What are you good at? And what will make you money? So what will people pay you for? And your genius zone is when in business is when we're bringing these three things together. So it's, and it's really found in the connection between these three elements. It's, it's, it's not one of these things on its own. It's about when these three things actually come together. Now, if you're not sure about this and if you feel a little bit perhaps overwhelmed by this process, then I really encourage you, and I'm a big believer in going going inside and really connecting with, I guess, with your with your higher self, whatever you'd like to call it, with, with but with with your inner guidance, your inner support network to really understand these things. So I'm a big pro proponent of really um, of doing meditation, creating some quiet time to help you go through the processes that I'm going to be suggesting today. So it's, it's a very powerful um, tool for you to be able to use. And we've got a meditation there in the, in the, in the in module one for you to have a look at and to use as part of this process, because it is very, very critical for you to go inward and to really think about, um, you know, these, these important things. And often people have often said to me, no one has ever asked me these questions. The questions you're asking me today, I've never been asked those questions before. So, um, that's why I go into a little bit of detail in this place, in this space, because it's really important to bring these components together. Um, and believe me, the reason that we're doing this is so that when you're in business and when you're working hard, you're completely connected to why you're working hard and you see the reason for it and, and you, you continue and you work consistently to, to make these things happen. So the first question that I have, and I've got a worksheet in the members area for you that covers these questions. So, um, the first question I have here is, you know, is, is a, it's a set of questions about you. So what do you value most? What are your core values? And I've put into the, um, 
I've put into the um, into the uh, welcome module a values elicitation exercise. So you can go back and go through that. It's just a I think it's a, it's a seven or eight minute video that you can watch to go through that. But this is really powerful to understand who you are because and what you value most because um, what happens is our values are the things that drive our behaviours. So if I value health and well-being, which I do, it means then if that's a high value for me, which it is, it means then that I'll put some time into making sure that I eat properly. I'll put some time into making sure that I exercise. I'll put some time into you know, looking after myself, making sure that I'm, I'm taking time out to take care of myself. So that value really drives a lot of my behaviour in my life. And what we're wanting to do here is just understand what are your core values and how can we sort of connect them into your business. So what do you love to do? So there's a question here about what do you love to do? And a really important question, who do you choose to be in the next five years? And this is about allowing you to start dreaming big. Where do you want to take your business? Where would you like to be in five years' time? And you'll note, I just would like to also highlight to you the words that I've chosen here. Who do you choose to be in the next five years? Not who you want to be, but it's who you choose to be. Because the power of our language is really incredible in terms of, um, in terms of what we are then creating in our lives. So if I say that I want to be something in five years' time, I'll still be left in the stage of wanting. So this was a really key component in terms of saying, yes, I choose this, I, and I'm a choice around this. So that's why I've, I've just used that language there. And then the next question here is, how would you describe your style and your approach to work? So in the members area, you'll find this, um, this zone of genius worksheet and you'll find these questions here and you can print that out for yourself. It is in an A3 format, um, but you can change the page size to A4 or you could just choose to write into it on your laptop or your computer, whatever you feel like doing. But it's really designed, this worksheet is really designed to be for you. It's your private area. It's almost like a private journaling space. So just write everything and anything that you want. Um, no one's going to ask you to see it, but I really encourage you to create some quiet time so that you can go into a space and, and really um, and really think about these things because they are very important. And I've just put in a little bonus exercise here because this is something that I've seen is very, I've learned in the last few months how important these couple of exercises are. And these are not on your worksheet, but you can just add them in. The first one is just write down 50 amazing things about you. This could be, this doesn't need to be business related. It can be just about you generally, because what we're wanting to do here is just discover things about ourselves we might have forgotten. Um, so just 50 amazing things about you. And if you have a, if you get a bit stuck on your list and you get stuck at, I don't know, 10 or 15 or 20, just keep pushing through. Um, when we're brainstorming, particularly things about ourselves, we can actually um, hit a bit of a brick wall. And if I was doing this as a live workshop with you, I would actually say, keep pushing through, keep pushing through. You'll hit a, you'll hit a blank spot, but keep pushing through. There's more there. So I really encourage you to do that. Um, if you're feeling a bit stuck on the 50 amazing things about you, then perhaps ask someone who knows you well. Because what we're wanting to do here is we're wanting to really just bring together your, your knowledge base about yourself. Often we can go out and we can say, I'm going to learn about Facebook or I'm going to learn about you know, an email program or whatever, whatever. And we'll put a lot of effort into that. But we often don't put as much effort or time into learning about ourselves. So this is designed to, to help you with that. And then the next thing is write down 50 things you do for people in your work. And this is actually a really important um, question. It's a new exercise to the program this time. But this is something I'd really love you to keep this sheet of paper because we're going to be referring to it again and again. And you'll actually use it as you bring your business to life and as you're creating content and so, so on. So write down 50 things you do for people in your work. So all of the things that you've done over your career, just write them all down. We'll, we'll be drawing on those as we go through. So that's about you and I'm sort of crossing over now into our next segment, which is focusing on um, thinking about you and your business. And this is where I'd like you to, again, come into a quiet space and you might find you might want to do sort of, you know, do this, do this meditation or do this quiet space, you know, in three little intervals. Don't feel you've got to sit down and, and do it all at once. You might just feel you need a bit of time, a bit of a break between them. Um, so this next one is about you and your business. So what part of your work inspires you most? What do you, this is answering the what you love question. What, what work are you doing when your time effortlessly slips by, when you're feeling like you're truly in flow? 
So there can be different things for different people. Um, but this is a question for you in terms of what, what is this for you? And what do you feel is your special gift to the world? So what is it that you do that perhaps no one else does? And here I'd like to also highlight that um, sometimes we, people have said to me, well, I don't feel I do anything special. Actually, you do. With your skills, the think your experiences and who you are as a person, you do have some very special and unique gifts and we want to really um, bring that out as part of this program. And then finally, what are you great at in your business or your work? So what are others, other people complimenting you for right now? And there's a space on the worksheet for you to answer these questions. Um, perhaps people have written you some testimonials for you know, the work that you've done. So what have they said in testimonials that they, that, about you? And then, then this is another question moving you forward into the future. Where would you like your business to be in two years' time? What would you really like to be focused on? And again, this is where I'd like you to almost imagine opening your mind up, imagine it like a beautiful flower is just opening up. That's what I want to do with your mind. I want you to really open your mind up to what the potential could be and dream as big as you can. Um, because I had a client of mine, it was interesting, I had a, had a discussion with a client of mine um, earlier this week and she was talking about her online business and she'd spoken to another um, coach and the coach had said to her, where would you like to, what would, you know, what's your income goal? Where would you like your business to be in two years? And my client said, well, I'd like to be earning $10,000 a month. And the, the, that coach said, wow, that's, that's a big goal. Um, you know, you need to do quite a bit of work to, to make that happen. Interestingly, my client has made that happen within, within 10 months. So she didn't listen to what had been said to her previously. She was very opened up and now she's, she's consistently doing well in her business in that space. So I just want to really open you up to the possibilities and um, for you to really be aware that we are, you can access, you can access many things. And I, I also, I, the road, you know, doing this work, it's a process and it does take consistency and it takes a lot of work, but you can achieve what you want to achieve in your business. Um, and so I want you to, I guess, think, think as, as openly and as broadly as you can about your business because I think there's so many opportunities out there. So in summary with all of this, what is your vision for you in two years? Where do you, and this is where, you, where do you choose to be? Where do you want to be in your business? And this is where I'd love you know, to, for you to be dreaming big and for you to be um, just, just really looking out there um, about what the possibilities are for you because those possibilities are there for you, I absolutely promise you. Now, the next step in our Genius Sign Worksheet is to have actually have a look, I, and this is again, this is completely optional, it's not critical, but I have just put this in here as an option for you to think about your vision for you across your life. Um, so. This course is a business course, but I actually, I'm, I'm quite a believer and you'll find this out about me. I'm quite a believer in looking at life holistically and um, business is a part of our lives and our lives are a part of our business. So for me, there are other things that I think about that are important for me in my life. And this is about keeping balance in your life as well. So um, there are other things here that you may wish to look at. Again, I'm not going to be asking to look at this. You don't need to share this unless you want to, but this is an opportunity for you to think about your vision for you across your life. So your spirituality, your awareness, your, your relationships and things like having fun and your health and vitality. So there's lots of, you know, you could actually do a bit of goal setting here for the next couple of years in those spaces as well. Um, because, and I'm adding this here because I think it's important that we think about these other things. I'm a big believer. I'm a big proponent in being committed to your business, but I'm also a big believer and a big proponent in committing to these other elements as well. So just what are the infinite possibilities of? This is really about dreaming big. Yeah. yeah. It's, jo it's Josie. Are you intending to share your um, keynote? Can you not see it at all? No. Oh, have I been talking? Thank you, Josie. Oh. You've done exceptionally well. It's been absolutely awesome. But well, I realise. I am intending I to share to my. Be sharing your oh, what a bummer, bummer, bummer. Didn't share my screen again. So, it hasn't mattered at all to me. It's been a lovely discussion. <laughs> oh, how theater. annoying. Well, that's lucky because I'm about to show you this picture of this amazing lady that we all know of, Mother Teresa. So thanks, Josie, because I have just been talking away. Um, I'll just need to get this going for a second. So this takes a little minute just to click over. So you know, you know why I'm just clicking over. So I, I may just need to just 
I might re-record the beginning of this so you get the slides that go with that, ladies. But um, this is all about um, thinking about the stone of genius is really thinking about, you know, who also inspires you. And when you're thinking about your business, it's about who inspires you. And I have um, shared here a picture of Mother Teresa because she's such an amazing role model for me. And so just like you, this again is in your zone of genius worksheets in terms of who are some women or men in your business and life who embody the type of person that you aspire to be in this next period of your life. So just, it doesn't have to be the whole person. No one, I don't think any of us, I have no hope of being like Mother Teresa, but there could be some elements of these people that would inspire you, that you admire, that you'd like to be bringing into your business as well. So, and, and what we can do is we can role model. Um, there's, there's a, there's a real um, approach around, there's a real, a real approach and a real thinking around being able to, even if I can't, well, unfortunately, Mother Teresa has passed away, but we can be mentored by people from afar. And the way we are mentored by them is by looking at them, reading books and biographies about them, but looking at the traits that we admire about them and role modelling those traits. So the question that I have for you is, what are, who are the people that you admire and what are the traits that will be important on your business journey for you? So I've just put up Mother Teresa here as one image. Um, there are probably many other people that might inspire you. So just think about a couple of people who inspire you and what is it that inspires you about them? Because generally what inspires you about them are probably the, some traits that you would like to bring into your life. So definitely um, feel free to, to do that. So once you've been through those processes, um, and through the, done that little meditation, done that contemplation, you, they've got this spot in your worksheet where you can actually just almost helicopter up above. So you've, you've done probably quite a bit of writing, quite a bit of um, free, you know, f, you know, stream of consciousness writing. So what I'd like you to do here at this point is to just note down, you know, what's, what were the key points? What is it that you really love? What do you feel you're really good at? And what will make you money? And this is going to start pointing you if you're in business, it's going to confirm that what you're doing in your business is right. And if you're not in business, if you're coming, you know, if you're starting out, this will help give you very good guidance about what you could be doing. And again, I encourage you as you go through this process this week to share your thoughts, ask questions and ask for support in our Facebook group. Um, it is a private space for you, so you can um, ask those questions. We do have alumni of Authentic Offers in the group. And there's, uh, there's some beautiful women in there. So they will, they, you know, they'll be seeing your posts, but they will be very supportive and they've been through this process. So they may even contribute in some way to, to what you're doing. Um, Josie is an alumni, so she's been through this process. So she's certainly there to give you a hand as well. So just really review that contemplation and summarise what you found out about yourself. And then if this is an extra bonus opportunity, but if you would really like to, this is a... This to me is a really exciting part of the process. If you want to really um, put in place and really set your intention for you, what you'd like for your business, I'd like you to, to encourage you to write a letter to your future self. And in this letter, lay out your vision for your future. Um, what are your big dreams and hopes for your business? And also allowing yourself to dream big. And in the worksheet, I have um, I put in some um, some pro other prompts for that letter to the letter for yourself to the future. But I really encourage you to write that letter and maybe put it somewhere safe and and open it up maybe in six months, twelve months time, and see what it says, and and you know look at your progress towards that. I think that could be a really beautiful process for you to do. So I'd really like to encourage you to to do that letter to your future self. It's a, it's a very powerful tool. Any time we're writing. And the reason, sorry, and the reason that it's powerful is that any time we're writing something down, we are, we're basically very clearly stating it to, but you might, if you subscribe, we're stating it to the universe, to the higher self, to whomever. But we're, when, as soon as we pick up a pen and we actually physically write it down, and I would encourage you to write this as a letter as though you're writing an old-fashioned snail mail letter. As soon as we write that down and those intentions, those words are on the page, we are that much closer to, to creating that reality. So really encourage you to do that and um, yeah, put it in a special place and open it up again for yourself maybe in six months' time. Um, now, have I got any little prompts here? I have some more questions for you here. Why are you setting out on this journey? How will you help others? And what difference will you and your business make to the world? So this is about really this notion of, of stepping into your authentic self and really helping you serve people and looking at how you're going to be serving people because... 
um, the people who people who come to work with me are very keen on marketing themselves authentically and they want to move away from feeling awkward about selling. And let me tell you, the way that we do that is that we focus on others and how we're helping them. And, and that is very, very key. And what will it mean to you to succeed? This is a really powerful question. So if you were to succeed in your business, what could that look like? What would you gain? What would your family gain? What would your children gain? What would, what would you gain in your life? And again, asking these questions really helps align ourselves with what we're doing and helps get, us get a lot more clarity in that. And what is the legacy you want your business to leave? So what, what, would it, what will this business leave you know, after you've moved on from the business? What, what legacy could it leave? And that's, these are very powerful questions. They do take some time to consider, but they will certainly pack a big punch to what you're doing in your business. So keep it somewhere safe and um, yes, refer to it when you need to remember your why or if you just want to keep it safe and then, and then open it up in a, in a few months' time to, to see what it's saying. Some beautiful things there. You'll, you'll have written some beautiful things to yourself, so it would be great to be able to review those when you can. The next, so that's basically really our exercises around aligning your your um, your business, your, around your um, aligning yourself with your business. Our next step is to really start focusing on your business and offer um, roadmap. Now, again, here I'm not wanting to overwhelm you today, but what will what I'll be giving you next week is this thing called a business and offer roadmap. And it looks a bit like this, but I'm not, I purposely have taken it out of today's class because I think it's, I've already given you a lot to look at. But this is the map that we'll be tracking through the course. We'll be working out what your business goal is, your marketing goal, who your audience is, what your offer is going to be. Today, I'd just like you to think about, you know, what your business goal, once you've been through your process of really working through those materials, it's about what is your business goal for the next two years? Where, in two years' time, where would you like to be? So dare I say it, by the end of 2019, where would you like to be in your business? So have a, have a look at that and think about that. I'll be giving you that map next week, but I just would like you this week to think about what your business goal is. Now, our next thing is, is to um, think about your audience. So our first component of our class today has all been about aligning yourself with your business. And there's, going, there's a few exercises there that you'll be able to do over the next few days. Um, from that, you'll think about, well, perhaps where would I like my, my business to be in two years' time? And then now we'd like to, I'd now like to move you into starting to think about your audience because getting to know your audience is really, really key to understanding what you're going to, you know, what your offer is going to be and what your messaging needs to be. So... And I, and I need to say to you, I guess, is that, is that when you get to know your audience, it's definitely the key to your income. But knowing your audience is also, for me, it's been absolutely the key to my personal fulfillment in business. So when I got beyond the numbers of what I, want my business to, what I wanted my business to achieve for me financially, when I started really thinking about, um, you know, who my audience was, when I started really getting up close and talking to my audience, and I call it talking nose to nose, to my audience, I really was able to get an, I really stepped into a, a much deeper level of fulfillment. I started feeling a lot better about my business and I started thinking, these are real people who really need my help and I can see my value in that. So that's another reason for getting to know your audience because you can see who you're helping people. And my big um, focus for you is to, you need to get to know your audience as well as you know your best friend. And if we look at these two little girls here, that you know, they're clearly best friends and they're spend a lot of time together and they have hold each other in a very high regard. And I really want to encourage you to feel that way about your audience, to feel them, you know, feel that you know them as well as you would know your own best friend or someone close to you into your life. So how do we get to do that? And how do we get to do that? If we, I'm going to share with you today, how you get to do that if you have an established audience um, and, and business and also how to get to do that, how to get to know to do that if you are just starting out. So I want to share a few tips with you on that. So the first thing is, is to review your own experiences with your audience. So I have got a worksheet that I actually want to go out to show you um, because it's just important that I think we have a look at that right now. So, um, so audience insights worksheet. So this worksheet you'll see, you'll be, you've, I've shown you in your, in your membership site, but this one here is, I'd just like you to think about your own experiences. And then I've 
just created this little worksheet for you to think about just specific people or groups that you've helped, um, how you've helped them, you know, and a bit more about them. So I just wanted for you to firstly to think about, you know, your own experiences with your audience. How have you helped people in some way? And then I'm going to just step you through this process in, in the presentation of, of, of um, golly gee, here we're just going to go. Oh, I've just gone to the wrong keynote there. So I'm going to step you through, step you through that, that, that process for you. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that now. We'll come back to that worksheet as well. So just review, just take a note and just think about, well, who are the people that I have helped? Just brainstorm into that worksheet the different audiences that you might pick groups. There might be groups of people, types of people, and who you've helped. The next thing I'd like you to do, this is a tool if you don't have an established business or if you haven't been in business for a long time, I'm going to teach you how to do a review of your competitors' testimonials. And then I'm going to then explain to you how to um, start asking questions and how to start surveying your audience. So in terms of reviewing your own experiences, I'd like you to just look at that audience insights worksheet and just take 30 minutes to consider these questions. And it's probably a better way for me to explain it. So who is the group? So it could be just, you know, you work with young mums, um, just provide a little bit of detail on their lifestyle. So how do they live? What are their social media habits? All of those sorts of things. And it's important to know how people live. So for example, if your audience um, is, is perhaps, perhaps they may be people in the workforce, um, they may be commuters. So it's important to think about these things. Do they commute? Because then if I know that they're a commuter, then they might have time to listen to a podcast or they might have time to listen to an audio or watch a video that I've prepared. Um, audio, but if they're a mum at home, that might be better for them just to be able to listen to, a, to an audio because they can be listening. This is what I do. I listen to podcasts while I'm hanging out the washing and, and all of those sorts of things. So this is why I'm asking you to think about how they live and to sort of really think, how does my audience live? Because how they live will reflect how they want to, will be able to receive communication from me. Um, what are their dreams and hopes and desires in relation to your service? So in relation to the, you know, the problem that you're solving for them. And what issues or pain are they experiencing? And what are they most afraid of? So these are questions, again, you may want to do a survey. You'll do a survey to find out some of the answers to these questions. But I'd like you as a first point of call just to think about who you've worked, worked with and just to segment them into groups if they are groups and then answer these questions for each group. Um, how are the issues that they're impacting them? Um, how are they impacting them? And what is it costing them? And if you've worked with them and as you've worked with them, how did you change their world? What transformation did you offer them? So that worksheet that I've just shown you over in Word covers these questions off for you. And just you can just go through that. Again, with each of these exercises, I'm asking you to really just tap into your intuition and to your gut. So whatever comes out, whatever you first think in the first three seconds is typically the truth. Um, if, you, if you take longer than that and start analysing and going too deeply, it, you're, you're possibly going to, um, overwork isn't the right word, but you're possibly going to get to a point where you're, um, where you're just, um, going, you could get into analysis paralysis. That's what I'm trying to say. So just first responses, just quickly jot this down. It doesn't need to be a war and peace. Um, now, the next step then is if you, if you haven't been working with, you know, many clients, or if you're just starting out in business, a tool that I have developed is the competitor test testimonial review. And this is one of my clients, Paul Palella, and he is a buyer's agent. And he um, had worked in the property industry for 20 years, but as a valuer, um, as a quantity surveyor, and for a short time in sales. And he came to me about two and a half years ago and said, look, I'm starting up as a buyer's agent. I don't know a lot about my audience, but I need some real help with my marketing. So I said to him, well, if, we don't have, if you don't have a big client list in the buyer's agency space yet, let's borrow some information and some insights from people who do. So what we did was we had a look at his, customer, his competitors and what their testimonials were saying. And we used this to get a real sense of what the issues were that they were facing. So just in these quotes here, I've just highlighted some of the issues and some of the benefits that people were looking for, some of the issues and some of the things they were looking for. So um, some of the benefits, you know, the buyer's agent process made it so much easier for me. Um, I didn't have to invest time. I'm a busy, hardworking business owner um, and I was delighted with how easy it was. 
And we're seeing here in these quotes, and we looked at many more of these and also talked to some of Paul's um, current clients, but what we're seeing here is some very some significant themes that came through. So stress involved in negotiating, stress involved of going to an auction, stress involved um, in obsessing over real estate websites. So what we did then, and I've given you a technique, a, a, a sheet in the Audience Insights um, worksheet where you can do this for yourself. Um, what we did then was we then developed a list of the audience pain points. So we, having looked at all of those customer testimonials, what, what sort of were the key themes that were coming up? So people didn't have any idea of the Brisbane market. They found the process very stressful. They found the process very time consuming. They were very afraid of being taken down or ripped off and they were highly emotional. They were very concerned and also concerned about getting, being too emotional in the process. And they were very scared of getting it wrong. So this was by reading these testimonials, you, you're hearing people's true language, the language that they would use. And that's the language that you, when we come to creating your messaging and your offer, we need to be repeating that language back to our audience. At the same time, we also looked at what um, they were looking for. So they wanted a very smooth time-saving process. They wanted a good negotiator. They wanted their best interests preserved and they wanted to know that they'd made the very best choice possible and they wanted efficient, honest and professional service. So with those elements then that I've just gone through, this is what I'd like you to do for your, um, with your competitors. And if you're not sure who your competitors are, um, reach out to me and I can, you know, can help you with that. But I think you'll, be able, you'll know pretty clearly who your competitors are. Have a look at their testimonials and see if you can, can do this because drawing out these themes now will actually help you as we progress through the course. So this is a really great little technique and tool to use. And it's also useful even if you've been in business for a while and you're quite established because it could just give you some really good insights into the actual exact language that people are using. So once we've done those couple of things, our next step is for you to start thinking about asking questions. So to go, in, go out and do your survey. And I want to say to you, this is something you can do even if you don't have a list quite yet. So in terms of asking questions, you can ask questions in different places. So you could do it in one-on-ones with people. Um, you could do it um, after you've provided a service, um, getting some feedback from them. You could do it when you're writing a blog post. You could do it in a Facebook Live or if you're on Twitter, doing a Periscope. Um, you can also go to a couple of forums, a couple of great forums, um, Quora, you may or may not have heard of, and Reddit. Reddit is something that um, certainly the younger generations are using um, and Quora is also available and both are, are fantastic. But generally, if you've got any question, if there's ever, ever a question that you thought might have been asked, it'll probably be on one of these two forums. So go and you could go and do um, some research in there and just see what questions people are asking about your area. In Reddit, you need to go down and find some subreddits and you can do some little... Um, searches into those. If you don't feel like doing that, you don't have to, but I'm just showing you different ways to find information out about your audience. The other very powerful tool that's available to all of us is Facebook groups. So going into Facebook groups, I know many of you are involved in Facebook groups, going in and using the question, the research day to actually ask your audience what it is that's bothering them, what's and what's what, what, what are the issues that they're having and seeing how they respond. And I've found those research days incredibly valuable for me and my business. And then you can also then do a formal survey. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. Um, I've actually got a worksheet and an email template for you in the membership area, which I showed you earlier. But what I would strongly recommend you do, you can do all those other things that I've just suggested, but I strongly recommend that you survey five to 10 people. They could be current clients, they could be previous clients. And if you're just starting out in business, it could be people in your desired audience group. So finding people who are like the people that you would like to speak to. And then um, run a survey. So I've outlined, I've in the in the um, in the in the membership area, you'll find my how to run an audience survey worksheet. But the process that I outline there is this: is that you prepare your questions. It'll take you about fifteen minutes to do that because I've given you some questions there. Um, you can then design your survey in SurveyMonkey or Google Forms, depending how proficient you are with the technology. That might take a little bit more time. I've got a video in the membership area to show you how to do that in SurveyMonkey. Um, you can then promote your survey, um, and I just basically email that out to people, um, to, to for people to 
to do as an online survey. Now you may choose actually not to run this as an online survey. You might just want to do a series of interviews. And I believe Rose, I think you're in the process of doing some interviews. So conduct your interviews and um, then you'll either do these interviews either to your, an e your own email list. If you've got that could be to people in your Facebook group, or it could be to a, a specific list of people that you work with or know. Um, but our plan here is, is that we want you to be doing five to 10 surveys as a minimum. And um, I know as I'm saying this, there's can be a little bit of nervousness in the group about doing this. Um, last In our last round of Authentic Office, people were nervous about this, but when they did it, they were just, they felt like they'd hit the jackpot because they got so much valuable information. And I can also tell you from my own experience of not doing this, you, if you don't do your survey, you don't, you're just not going to enough about, know enough about your audience. So it's a really critical step. If there's nothing else that you do from this first class, I really encourage you to prepare your survey and either put it online or do it one-on-one, -on -one, do some one-on-one -on -one interviews with people. Um, and then once you've done your interviews to review your research. Now, the way that I have structured the, the course is that you need a couple of weeks to do this process. So next week, I'm going to ask you, how are you going with your surveys? I'll be doing that in the Q&A session. Um, but I'm also giving, I would like you, it will take you perhaps a little bit of time to get all of this work done. So this needs to be done in the next couple of weeks because by week three, we need to have your audience results in so that you can really be, get, have real clarity on your audience avatar, who they are and what they want. And then you can start then preparing your office for them. So there's a couple of weeks to do this process, but I really encourage you to, to jump out and, and to do that. Um, and yes, creating, we'll start on creating your avatar next week, but we'll be confirming this in week three. But this is a really core part of the program. So I really encourage you to do it and to access those elements in, in the, in the, in the, um, in the membership area. And this is what the how to run a survey document looks like. And it will pay dividends for all of your future marketing. I really encourage you to do it and, um, and to take part in it. So as a summary today, I've covered already quite a bit in our first week. So we've got our zone of genius worksheet for you to do with your business goal for the business and offer roadmap. Um, you've got your audience insights worksheet. There's a bit of work to do there and your customer survey. I would encourage you to create that this week um, and then look to be rolling it out into next week, but certainly start on creating that. So, um, and then email me at hello at jenramsey.com if you'd like access to your Trello board. So that I think is a wrap on um, what I wanted to cover today. I'm just going to stop sharing my screen, the screen, so I can come back to, um, to, to, to some questions. So there we go. Great. So Crystal's had to go. We've run a little bit over time. So excellent. So any questions from anybody? And Anna, um, any questions from you? Just put them into the chat box. I can see the chat box now as well. So how's everyone feeling about that? Any questions at all? Yeah, it was really good. Thanks, Jen. Yeah, I got a lot from that. Um, I'm looking forward to it. There's a lot of work to do, though. But yeah, no, it's good. Great, Anna. Thank you. Yes, and there is a bit. Um, Jace, I don't know if you want to have any views or anything you want to comment on, considering you have been through this before, in terms of you might have a little bit of wisdom you might want to share. <laughs> well, there, there is a lot. Um, I was, uh, I had an accident the day the course started. And I was in hospital when you started this, you did the first session. That's right, so, you were too. Uh, yeah. So I actually struggled through the first thing. So I'm actually really looking forward to doing it again now um, because I was on a bit of catch up. I ended up in surgery and, you know, doing all sorts of things for a couple of weeks there. Um, so, yeah, I'm actually quite excited about doing it again because of a number of reasons. That's one. And also I'm a lot clearer having done it before on um because when i started last time i was sort of felt like i was in a bowl of pea soup i didn't really <laughs> i couldn't really see you know i couldn't really clearly articulate my zone of genius and i certainly couldn't clearly articulate um my client avatar and even though i don't really think i've got them right i think this is going to give me the opportunity to do that i'm feeling pretty excited about it actually yeah fantastic yeah. thanks josie and yes yeah. Josie was an absolute trooper. She'd had a, she had a very, very bad ankle break. And I 
was impressed that you actually stuck with it. You had a lot on at the time. So it was very, <laughs> it was amazing. So yeah, great. So look, there, there is quite a bit here. So I just encourage you to step, take a step by step. Again, as I said, particularly with the zone of genius material, it's, it's almost like it's about creating quite space, but keeping a light touch on it. And I don't know if that makes sense to you, but have a quiet space to just go in, just do a bit of stream of consciousness writing and then come back out again. And I find when I'm doing that kind of journaling work um, that it's actually useful to just come in, do it briefly, and then 24 hours later come back and I'll have incubated on a bit while I've been away. So I'd love you to, yeah, just take it step by step. But the key thing out of all of this is the two key things, if you were to do anything, um, would be, I guess, to do the zone of genius piece and maybe a letter to your future self. Like that, that could almost be the summary of everything. You don't need to do the role model stuff if you don't want to. But I've, I'm someone, I, I do give a lot and there's a lot of processes there. So you pick and choose what you want. But if you were to do anything, I do the zone of genius piece and a letter to your future self and, the, and, and start to think about your creating your survey and asking questions of your audience. And I really want to highlight that, um, the importance of that. I, it's, it's going to drive... The, the benefit of this course will come from the work you do around audience um, research. So that's a really key takeaway from me. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's really, really important. There is lots of material in the, um, in the, you know, in, in the, in the handouts and you can come back. We'll have the PDF in this, in the, in the session, in the process here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually re-record the whole class because it was, there's things going on. Um, and, please ask any questions in the Facebook group. I'm, I'll, I'm in there as much as I can be. I'm sort of, I've been it at least once a day to respond to questions and I do check notifications. If I'm not responding, just tag me in the comment, just put Jennifer Ramsey as a tag and I'll come, it'll, that generally gets me to come and have a look at it. So, yeah. So that's a bit of a wrap. Mary, you okay? Everything okay for you? In terms of what we covered? Oh, I need to just unmute. Just unmute yourself, darling. That's it. Oh, what if I can unmute you? Oh, is that better? Oh, I was, I was talking to my own dear. <laughs> Am I good? Good guy? No, that was really, really fantastic. Um, I was just saying there's not going to be enough hours in the day to get everything done. Really pleased I've started. Great. Excellent. Can't wait for the next bit. <laughs> Fantastic. And just know that this, thanks, Mary. And just know that the work we're doing around the audience material is going to be, you know, we're, we're doing this over a couple of weeks. I've, ex ex I've extended the time for that. But what I've done is I've introduced it today because it's an important concept. And those of you who really want to get in and do it, you can make a start. So, um, so that's just a resource there, but yeah, we'll just keep on tracking through. All right. Well, we'll call that a wrap for today. Any questions? Um, give me a call. Or give me a, give me a hoy in the Facebook group. And um, Anna, I've just realised I've got to step into another presentation, actually for Mary's and my friend Josh Oki. So I need to go do that now. So Anna, I might have to give you a call in about an hour. Maybe if you can see if you can work that out for yourself, Anna. And if there's any issues, just send me a text, and we'll try and work it out a bit later in the day. Um, but I think that's that's it. So. Take care, have a wonderful few days and we'll meet again on Tuesday at 12.15 for Q&A. And feel free to bring questions into Q&A. I am open for business on Q&A on Tuesday. So bring stuff you want to workshop, um, I'll be there. All right. Cool, Beautiful. thanks, Jim. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.